Welcome back to the Bionicle Inspiration Series. Today, the Bionicle Inspiration Series is a little bit like those really cool swords you got on the Tora and Nika sets, where you'd press the button and they'd light up. That's what we're like. If you're in a dark place, you're not getting any ideas, you're looking for a little bit of inspiration. We're here to be that light up sword, to light the spark that'll ignite the fire, that'll burn down the bad creative vibes that you may have right now. And replace them with good creative vibes and inspire you, because that's what we're here for. What else are we here for today? We're here to talk about the character creature build system, CCBS. And you might be like, what is CCB who? Well, CCBS is not BS. It's all the different shells, the ball socket connections, all that sort of stuff that appeared in this uh, Hero Factory 2.0 and then onwards into the modern day with G2 Bionicle. A lot of great pieces, a lot of great ways to use them. And so we're going to talk about a whole bunch of ways that you yourself could use them today. So let's dive in. Let's talk about some CCBS related mocks. The first mock we've got today is by That One Tfall, and this is called Phasmid Plague Mech. So, this of course is a Plague Mech. You may have heard of Plague Mechs before from past uh, Bionicle Inspiration series episodes. Essentially, they're like kind of half bug, kind of half robot. There's a whole story behind them. Jafer came up with the concept, and a lot of people like building them. Check out the Plague Mech related episodes of the Bionicle Inspiration series, because honestly, they'd be a much better way of explaining it. And we may as well just talk about the mock, because it looks super cool. So we can see a bunch of CCBS pieces used here, specifically some of the tan pieces. We can see them being used on the shoulders, sort of what appears to be some sort of like heart light or like energy beam in the center of his torso there. Uh, there's another sort of um, shoulder chest armor piece being used there that's also a CCBS part. So kind of the majority of the tan here are CCBS pieces. So there you go, that's what they look like, just in case you're not sure. But, hey, they're pretty cool. But one thing I really love about them is we can see that they're also being used in conjunction with a few system pieces. So specifically those system pieces are on the waist, the lower legs, uh, and there's some also on the head as well. Now, some system pieces honestly have pretty similar textures to CCBS armor parts. So you can really use them in conjunction very well, and texture-wise, they flow perfectly with each other. So I, I just think it's fantastic to see just how awesome and easy it is to use system pieces and more sort of modern parts with CCBS stuff. Because there are some older kind of Bionicle pieces that texture-wise, they, they, they just kind of don't work uh, together. You know, sometimes a lot of people complain that Bionicle is difficult to build because it's kind of a whole other ballpark to system. And of course, you could say the reverse. If you mainly build Bionicle, sometimes your system can be a little bit harder to use. But it all comes down to personal preference, of course. But I think that's one of the beautiful things about a CCBS to remember is that, hey, it flows perfectly with system stuff, you know? And heck, a lot of CCBS armor pieces even have more system-focused connections. You know, a lot of them have those two lightsaber rod holes at the top of them where you can easily insert any kind of bar Lego piece. So, hey, you know, there's a lot of good uh, interconnection that you can do there. And I think this mock is a great example of how effectively those things can be used together. Specifically, too, because this bug... Uh, plague mech design here is calling for a more sort of uh, crunchier um, bug-like kind of texture for it that you might find on the the sort of shell of like a beetle or something and both the system pieces and some of these ccbs parts work so well in tandem here at uh, creating and communicating that so if you are aiming to build a plague mech or any kind of sort of like bug-like creature these might be some pieces to look into additionally too i love how a lot of these ccbs armor pieces work flawlessly as shoulder armor, but then they also work really well as kind of um, this sort of waistcoat design here around the kind of crotch and lower legs. And I think that's just interesting to note because yes, here they do, I don't know, I guess they more sort of resemble armor and it's probably a little bit more almost sort of like samurai-like armor. So it's all sort of distinct same kind of texture and coloring. But I also like the idea of taking this out of the context it's in. Maybe you yourself want to build some sort of character that uses a lot of CCBS parts. Well, you could very easily use CCBS pieces for harder armored textures or sort of like a waist cloth design uh, that could flow around the waist of a mock. So I think it's just interesting to note just the versatility of them, how you can use them for very different things, and yet they still work very well. So hey, you know, if I was a salesperson, maybe you'd want to buy some CCBS right now, but I'm sure you've got some in your collection already. But hey, you know, the possibilities are endless. Now, I want to talk about a couple of things with this mark because there's some fantastic stuff going on with it. 
So one thing I love is the arms and the lower legs here as well, how they use these trans green beam pieces. So some of these appear to just be like lightsaber rods, and then others appear to be some of the larger, longer kind of shooter pieces that you get on some like Star Wars sets and a few other things as well. And I just, I love how that kind of flows in there, just introducing a nice little pop of color, but also just how the, the, the majority of the limbs are kind of built around that element there. And there's just something that looks very, very nice with it. And also it's great to see some of those pieces being put to use because, you know, I'm not necessarily a big fan of those sort of shooter pieces uh, on Lego sets. Normally if, you know, I, I know I just don't tend to use them in the things that I build. So it's just great to see it being used here. You know, great to see more modern recent pieces being put to, to good use because, hey, that is what CCBS is, isn't it? Is some of the more modern recent parts that you can play with. So, you know, that's another thing. You can very easily blend them with pieces that you get uh, some of the newer pieces that you get, for that matter. So hey, that's pretty cool. And you know what? This whole plague mech is pretty cool. But let's move on to some more cool mocks, shall we? And let's see other ways that you can use your CCBS. So this next mock here, well, well, series of mocks really, I suppose, is by Guy Hanley. And they have a whole bunch of different names, uh, so I'll kind of cover those in a second here. But uh, hey, these are three really fantastic mocks that use CCBS pieces in some really creative ways. And um, also, by the way, Guy here, he's only age, he's only 10 years of age, so hey, that's pretty awesome. Always great to see some of the younger builders getting into Bionicle, always, always lovely. And um, yeah, some phenomenal stuff here for being so young. We will watch your career with great interest, that's for sure. So yeah, love your stuff. Um, let's dive into it, shall we? So this first kind of acid green spider here is called Arachno. Uh, one thing I love about it is the kind of... Um, is it thorax or I just I always call it a butt I don't know spiders got a big butt but that's really accurate to spiders isn't it you know and so you know obviously a lot of these pieces seem very inspired by some of the skull related uh, g2 bionicle villains uh, and some of them did have more sort of spider-like aesthetics but what I love so much about uh, guys arachno mock here is that it actually looks a lot more accurate to how a spider naturally would look you know having the sort of larger hind quarters uh, and then also the sort of more, almost sort of bone-like limbs that you would find on a spider. Especially, I love too that he's actually used those bone CCBS pieces because that actually works pretty well for spiders, you know? So a great use of those parts there. Fantastic. And um, yeah, honestly, just overall is just a very sort of realistic looking spider design and uh, really crafting these CCBS pieces in a, in a fantastic way. So really, really solid work there. Uh, on to the next mock in this series of three by Guy. Uh, this black and grey scorpion mock here is called Thick Claw. So one thing I love about this is the head design here, using that skull spider as as kind of the majority of the head. Uh, often, I don't know, actually, I suppose people do use those skull spider masks as masks, but what I love that Guy has done is he's attached all of those, uh, all of the feet on the skull spider mask, he's put them backwards, and then this way here, it's almost like the head of this spider has sort of a diff different appendages, or perhaps that's sort of its mouth. Uh, kind of, I can kind of imagine that it would, you know, grab prey with its pincers, and then it would get sort of eaten by all those different claws in that manner. I think that's just a really unique face design, you know. Yeah, yeah it's not specifically accurate to a scorpion, but he's building his own, you know, cool little fun creation here. It doesn't need to, you know, specifically relate to uh, how a scorpion will look in the real world. It's always fun to branch out and come up with your own unique ideas. But I think that one, that's not only a great use of that skull spider mask, but also just really unique character design, which I love. That's, that's awesome. I still love, too, those pincers, like I spoke about before, the fact that the pincer is just uh, some dark red claws being attached onto the black uh, CCBS armor piece there. Just a very simple, sort of small, effective way of designing uh, a claw design or a pincer design like that. I really, really like that. Uh, and that being repeated again on the tail for the stinger. Very effective. Nice to see some beautiful cohesion between the two so that they really, you know, flow together. It all looks like it's a part of one unified whole. It's uh, very, very nice. So some great stuff there. The final mock now, this sort of tan and blue creature with the staff, is called Dune Viper. Cool name. And a cool color scheme. You know, I, I when I first saw this, I thought that the tan was uh, white. The lighting in my uh, Lego cave here is not particularly uh, great. Well, I didn't have the lights on. The lighting is actually pretty good. But uh, when I turned it on, I was like, ah, oh, never mind. That's tan. Um, so, I don't know, I just kind of like the combination. Honestly, I'd like the combination even if it was white. Actually, that would probably work well. But the, the trans blue combined with the tan there with the little hints of white. I think it's a very, very pleasant color scheme. It does give him this slight sort of 
mythical magical look to him which i think fits with the the general design here also the staff is very unique this sort of uh uh, trident with only two tips i don't know what you would call a trident with only two tips i'm sure there's some weapon experts out there that can give me a an answer to that but regardless it, it looks cool and hey a little like sort of serpent yanti style tail like that uh is always a welcome addition and um it's just a little bit more unique you know as nice as a, a two-legged creature is a normal sort of humanoid character it's always nice to see a, a departure from the norm and giving them some very abstract weird leg design it's uh pretty dang cool so yeah a lot of really cool stuff here some great uses of ccbs pieces love your work and keep at it man if you're only 10 years old and you're building cool stuff like this keen to see what you do when you're older because you'll only get better the next mock we've got today is by calcifer mox and this is calcifer angel of vengeance so I assume this is his self mock given that the mock's name is very similar to his name but uh, I'm not going to make any assumptions here but uh, hey, regardless of if it's his self-mock or not, still looks pretty mint. Really do enjoy this one. So, little tiny bits of CCBS on this one here. You know, some of the other mocks we saw so far were quite CCBS heavy. This one a little less so, but I still think it's important to, to do that, to, to blend some of your Bionicle with your CCBS. So let's discuss, what's he done? Well... The first thing that I love about this that uh, immediately sort of struck me was the use of that black kind of paw piece. Uh, I know specifically that piece came in red on, I believe his name was Rawjaw, one of the Hero Factory villains from uh, Hero Factory 3.0, the Jungle Wave. So that being used there for a torso uh, element, I think works really, really well, actually. The way it kind of flows kind of looks like, you know, pecs or, or something that you would find on a, a typical male body. So, hey, I think it uh, is just a nice way of using that piece. I also like how he's attached two of those Exoforce robot arm pieces uh, on the two little edges of that piece with some bones uh, onto that, and how that almost sort of hugs those Onawa masks. I don't know if those Onawa masks are actually attached through uh, those Exoforce arms, if it's almost sort of a friction connection and they're actually just sort of holding it in place, there's no actual physical connection. It may not be, it's a little hard to say. I would imagine that Onawa mask is actually attached uh, onto like the shoulder or something, but um, hey, it still looks cool the way those pieces sort of uh, intertwine between uh, one another. I think is just very effective and very nice. So uh, I enjoy that. This whole sort of general kind of um, shoulder torso area there, I think, is really well done. Uh, additionally, some more CCBS pieces in dark red being used on the upper arms and the oh sorry, the lower arms and the upper legs. So honestly, using you know, sort of that size of CCBS armor or kind of any size of CCBS armor for the most part, it's pretty much just always a really good go-to when you're building lower arms and upper legs. Those pieces, at least in my opinion, always work really well because I feel like the natural kind of look at them does look a lot like the, the way that a thigh looks. And they also look very similar to sort of like gauntlets of some kind or sort of, you know, um, van brasses, some type of wrist armor. Uh, so, at least in my opinion, I personally think that, hey, if you're struggling with upper legs, lower arms, grab some of those CCBS pieces, because they're just a really good go-to. Plus, I do actually have some videos on upper arm instructions, there was uh, 10 of them in that video, so hey, if you are really struggling and you need something there, they're a little bit of an older video at this point, but um, they shouldn't be too hard to find if you give them a Google there. Uh, so uh, you can check those ones out if if you're looking for a bit of inspiration on uh, on uh, arms and legs and things. There are instructions that I posted for that. And there'll actually be some more of those videos fairly soon as well. So you can stay tuned for that. Uh, but that's neither here nor there. Uh, another thing I love about this, and I, I use the term CCBS with this very loosely, but there is kind of another use of a CCBS piece, which is the cape on this mark. And so you might be like, ah, that's not really a CCBS piece. But that cape comes in the Captain Phasma Star Wars Ultra Build set. And it's just sort of a newer piece, you know, and it works with a very CCBS heavy uh, set. So, yeah, I, I wouldn't necessarily classify that as a CCBS piece. But hey, if you're using CCBS pieces, you're going to still use the other elements that kind of came with it or elements that work with it or just sort of in general newer Lego pieces. So I think that's always important to think about is... You know, what are some newer pieces? What are pieces that just would naturally work well with CCBS? Or heck, have you got any cloth pieces? Because cloth always looks good on a Bionicle. So, you know, see what works. Pair it up with your CCBS and see if it's something that uh, is up your alley, you know? 
play around with some of those pieces that came in those CCBS sets that you maybe wouldn't classify as CCBS. You know, like these capes here. See what works. See how it works for you. Uh, one thing I also love about this mock, and it's not really CCBS, but the wings on this. So it uses a whole bunch of very small kind of Technic panel pieces. Uh, check a whole variety of your different Technic sets, even if you just kind of go on Bricklink or Brick Set and kind of browse a bunch of Technic sets. You can see what sort of sets had the pieces like this. Because uh, they come in a whole variety of different colors, shapes, and sizes and stuff, but they're very uh, useful and versatile for a Bionicle mock. And this is a great example of just how versatile and awesome they can look, because, man, what a cool wing design. And uh, additionally, too, I've said this before, you know, if you're looking for a lot of pieces that you can use in a uh, Bionicle mock that you're making, obviously Bionicle or CCBS as a concept, construction as a concept, you can't really buy it at stores anymore because LEGO doesn't make any construction stuff at the moment, unfortunately. The main place you'd be able to buy that sort of stuff is, uh, you know, just Facebook Marketplace, your Ebays, your Bricklinks, your Brick Owls, all those sorts of places like that. But never forget Technic, because you can use Technic stuff with a Bionicle or Construction mock, or a CCBS Heavy mock for that matter. Because these are Technic panel pieces, they came in Technic sets. You know, study your Technic sets when you're at the shops, because you can use those pieces in some Bionicle stuff. So, uh, always worth a second glance, always look, uh, always worth considering buying, you know? I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna force you to go buy some Technic stuff, but hey, if you look at a Technic set and you go, I could use those pieces for wings, or I could use it in some fashion, maybe it's worth investing, you know? So yeah, fantastic looking wing design, and honestly, just a fantastic looking mock that uses CCBS in more subtle, but beautiful ways. Next mock now, this one's a pretty cool one, it's by The Travelling Skull, and it's General Grievous. It seems the Travelling Skull knows the way to my heart because he's made a Star Wars mark, which, you know, love me my Star Wars, so hey, awesome. But yes, it's, uh, it's our boy General Grievous looking great. If you are building a CCBS mock, never forget, just like I spoke about before with the Captain Phasma set, there's a whole plethora of the Star Wars Ultra Build sets that you can play with. So why not revamp one much like this? And I mean, heck, that General Grievous set, you know... A lot of the different Star Wars Ultra Build sets, you find them in your targets or on uh, you know, Goodwill shelves or clearance, you know, uh, areas and stuff, unfortunately, because there wasn't always a huge demand for them, which is a shame because, hey, they had some pretty cool pieces. But, you know, if you do find them on clearance, that means you can get them at some pretty cheap prices. But man, General Grievous, he actually sold pretty well. He was never in those clearance bins. But uh, hey, check your stores next time you're there, because if you can find some of those sets on clearance... It always feels pretty good when you get a good deal on a, on a construction-related set, doesn't it? So, hey, check them out. But, General Grievous, easily one of the coolest from the uh, whole wave of Star Wars Ultra Build sets. So why not revamp him and put your own unique spin on him? Maybe even make him a little bit more accurate, which this one here is a little bit more accurate for General Grievous, you know? He specifically has a more sort of focused area for General Grievous's sort of um, organ sack that Kenobi rips open and shoots later in Revenge of the Sith. Uh, weird, but awesome. And um, additionally, too, he's given him a cape, which is definitely a fine addition to this, uh, This it's not really a collection, but, you know, I'm going to force that Star Wars quote in here if I can. Um, it really works. It really works well. The original set didn't come with a cape, so I assume this is a more sort of custom cape in that regard. But, um, hey, works really well and really, really complements this mock, that's for sure. I like, too, that this mock doesn't have the four arms, which, of course, General Grievous can uh, have. But he also can just have the two arms because they separate. But, um, you know, it, it can be a little bit more um, difficult to design the forearm concept and then have it, you know, revert back into the two-arm concept. So I honestly think there's nothing wrong with the fact that this Mox only has the two hands, you know? It's a little bit like, uh, you know, in Revenge of the Sith when, Kano when Grievous is like, oh, I've been trained by Count Dooku. And everyone's like, I know, we've fought for, like, years. Why are you telling me this? But he then, like, splits his arms out and Kenobi's like, oh, dang, that's pretty cool. And uh, I forget if in the Clone Wars he does that in front of Obi-Wan. So I don't know if that's actual genuine surprise. But maybe it's that, you know. This is Grievous before he revealed his uh, true four-armed form, you know. So, uh, hey, I like that. Just because it's not totally accurate. Eh, there's times where Grievous only looks like he has two arms. It's cool. It's whatever. So, hey, I like it. Awesome. So yeah, really cool little subtle revamp on General Grievous here. Always nice to revamp a mock. It's always just good fun, isn't it? You know? So, hey. Consider revamping some stuff and using CCBS in it, because it's a, it's a good time. So nice work, Travelling Skull. Let's move on to Alex Mertens and his mock, Lobster Tail. So this is a bit of a fun one, you know? 
Everyone likes to build characters, everyone likes to build uh, humanoids, animals, Rahi. But did you ever think about building a little fun joke mock or building food? Because why not? And heck, these uh, really unique kind of shoulder armor, sort of very curved, beautiful pieces here. Uh, where did they come in red? Were they on the Praetorian Guard in red? No, that's not true. Oh, I'm going to have to pause the episode and Google it because I don't know. Where did they come in that color? Because I know they came in a bunch of different sets. Like Commander Cody had some in orange. Uh, Finn had some in, I think, like dark tan. Uh, I know they came in black as well on like um, uh, K2SO. Where did they come in red? I'm going to have to Google this, guys. They came in dark red on a Hulkbuster. I'm going to have to Google it. I just, just do it. Just do it. Pause. I pause and restart my recording. It's mere seconds for you, but minutes for me. So it came in Bayes Malbus character from Rogue One, a Star Wars story. Uh, the set actually only came with one of those armor um, pieces in red, uh, but I'm sure Alex has bricklinked them or something, or I don't know, maybe he bought five Bayes Mal- well, not five, he bought, you know, how many is that? One, two, three, four, five, six Bayes Malbuses, you know? Maybe he just decided, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna commit, I'm gonna get heaps, just so that I can build this lobster. He was committed, you know? Maybe. But hey, doesn't matter how he got them, he's built this cool mock, and it actually looks a lot like a lobster tail. This is just a really fun mock here, using all these pieces in this fashion to recreate what would be a rather tasty, fine dining meal, you know? Not really fine dining, you know what I mean. But hey, fun, unique, creative, it's cool, you know? Sometimes, sometimes that's the case, isn't it? You look at a specific piece and you go like, oh, that looks like this, doesn't it? Yeah. And that's where nice part usages are born, and nice part usages are fun. And a good nice part usage makes a mock, really makes it look nice. So, hey, next time you look at a piece and it looks a little bit weird or it reminds you of something, Build it. Make it a thing, you know? CCBS is versatile. You can use it in all sorts of ways, whether it's a scorpion like we saw before, a cool angel dude, or a lobster tail. The possibilities are truly endless. And hey, maybe you want to advance this a little bit further. You want to take what Alex has done with this edible lobster tail and put it on a larger lo larger scale lobster mock. Eh, why not? Something to think about. All right, so I just kind of briefly wanted to touch that because, hey, I love it and the principles there are cool. CCBS, very versatile. You can use it in many a good way. Final mock is by Ron Falkers, and it's called Larina. So, again, doesn't use a huge amount of CCBS, but it blends the CCBS so beautifully with other Bionicle pieces. And, you know, I think the times have passed, but I remember a time where people were like, oh, no, no, I refuse to combine my CCBS with my Bionicle. Those two things are separate. How dare you even think about that, you know? I remember before G2 came out, I was at Brickvention and this kid came up to me and he was like, yo, there's all these rumors that the Bionicle's coming back. And at the time that was true. This was like 2000, what was that, 14 or something? And he's like, I do hope if it comes back, it's not in like CCBS because I hate CCBS. I never bought Hero Factory. I refuse to support the thing that killed Bionicle. No, no way. Um, and I want um, that. I want it to be, uh, you know, I want it to be in classic Bionicle pieces, you know? So, hey, there was a time where people were just like, no, no about CCBS. And I, I think for the most part, that time has passed. But never forget, you can combine the two and you can do it in some pretty cool ways. So let's talk about what those cool ways are. Well, first things first, they did technically come in some... Well, no, they didn't. That's a lie. But those Glatorian heads, which also came on the first wave of Hero Factory... I was going to say that they were CCBS pieces. You kind of argue they weren't because it's kind of just before CCBS came out. But that's neither here nor there. They look really cool when they're stacked like that and they form this really cool like ponytail like kind of hair design. That's just awesome. And they're used in conjunction with uh, one of those visors from the brain attack wave there. So, hey, that's pretty cool. Nice little combination of pieces there. Looks awesome. I also love how that Hero Factory kind of torso piece there from uh, some of the like G2 wave of Hero Factory sets is being used because it very much looks as if it's uh, just, I don't know, it just it really flows very well with the rest of that torso. But also, you know, it has that Hero Factory core on it. And you could make the argument that, hey, if it has a Hero Factory core, it's got to be a hero, right? From Hero Factory. But I feel like that piece has just kind of become very commonplace and very is very often used in mocks, especially with a Hero core on it. To the point of, it kind of stops being a hero core, and actually just starts, just honestly, just looking pretty cool, you know? It just sort of flows nicely with the design, it just kind of has become its own unique thing. At least the way I look at it. Maybe you might look at this and go like, oh, it has to be a hero core, can't be anything else. But that just kind of comes down to personal preference. But hey, I, I think it's just important to remember, like, you don't need to be afraid to use that piece. It doesn't 
automatically make this mock a hero or anything. You can just kind of, you know, I don't know, give it your own unique flair or personality. It, uh, you know, can be whatever you want it to be. So I like that. I just really like the sword on this mock here too. Some of those uh, sword pieces, I think, did originally come in some Ninjago sets, but they did also appear in a bunch of uh, CCBS sets as well. And I love the fact that they're kind of being combined in this fashion to form this almost sort of, I don't know, this this blade with this sort of slight angle to it like that. It's just, I don't know, it's just unique and really, really cool. Just a very different blade design and uh, very cool in all honesty. Uh, so I very, very much like that. Some other CCBS pieces being used on the uh, lower legs and the lower arms, specifically some trans-orange uh, CCBS pieces. And that's another great thing about CCBS. There is a whole plethora of translucent colored pieces, uh, whether that's your, your trans-neon greens, there's even some trans-yellow ones, trans-orange like this, trans-purple, trans-dark blue, all sorts of craziness. So if you want to play around with some translucent colors, CCBS is there for you to do so. Um, so, hey, definitely worth playing around with. And here, it works pretty well. Never stray away from those translucent colors. They're, they're honestly pretty cool. So, hey, this is a pretty cool mock. Got some nice uh, little areas of blending CCBS with some Bionicle. It's really cool. It's really cool indeed. So that's it for this episode of the Bionicle Inspiration Series. I hope you enjoyed all the mocks that you saw today. And, hey, maybe you've... Uh, well, now, now that we've started to look at CCBS a little bit, maybe you want to play around with some yourself. And if you do... Be sure to let me know. I'd love to see what you build with some CCBS. So where can you let me know if you've built some cool stuff with CCBS? Well, I have my links to my social media in the description below. You can always message me there if you so please. Uh, I have been very busy lately. I've got only a few more weeks left of university until I graduate. That's terrifying. Uh, so uh, people have been messaging me stuff on like Discord and social media and a few other places. And I've taken my sweet time to respond. I wholeheartedly apologize. I've been a busy beaver, but I'll reply. Don't worry. I... I tend to reply to most messages I get anyway, so there you go. Um, additionally, in the description below are links to the mocks that you saw in today's episode, so if you're like, these builders are pretty cool, you can check out some of the stuff that they've done. Sometimes submitted emails don't always have links to where they are, so uh, if you have thoughts on them, then maybe you can share them on Discord or something, and uh, maybe they'll see it there. Additionally, if you want to see some of your own submitted mocks on the show, you can submit them through the email that's currently on the screen right now. It is also in the description below, so if you want to copy and paste that, put it in an email, you can do so. If uh, you're like, what do I put in my email? Uh, you just got to put some pictures in there, you know? Some nicely photographed pictures are always good. That's always a, a bonus. Sometimes I can't feature a mock just because the photos are not super clear. Uh, but hey, do the best you can with the photos that you can do. Maybe get a second opinion on them if you're not too sure if they work. Uh, and uh, then put whatever sort of information you want in the email. Whether that's your name, the mock's name, whole backstory, no backstory at all, completely up to you. Just a FYI, I don't reply to the uh, submission emails. Uh, so if you do send me a, an email sort of asking me something or anything like that, I just won't reply to it. I get a lot of submission emails. It's really hard to keep track of. Uh, that sort of stuff, and um, I just kind of use it as the sort of database so that I can, you know, store those mocks in emails and cross-reference them, put them in, in in episodes, all that sort of stuff. So if you have a question for me, it's best to reach out to me on social media. Speaking of reaching out to me, if you uh, want to join one of the private Discord servers that I've got, or you want some additional free weekly content, you can head over to Patreon, and that's exactly where you can get it. I post my weekly podcast over there. I also have the private Discord server, like I said, and a whole bunch of other fun, unique behind-the-scenes stuff, so you can check it out there if you are interested. Sounds fun. Sounds good. All right, that's it. Thank you very much for listening. Hopefully you enjoyed. Get to building. Have a good day. Thank you, and goodbye.